Grace and peace. Good morning. Welcome to Ready Refuge Church here on America Road in Henderson, North Carolina, where our pastor is none other than Ella William G. Winston. We thank you for joining us today. Today our Sunday school lesson will be taken from 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse 3 through 14. But before we go into our lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you and we praise you. We glorify you for you are our God. You woke us up. You start us on our way. We have the activities of our limbs and the sound mind. We thank you for that, God. We repent of all sins and transgressions and iniquities, Lord God, that we have in our lives because it's against you and you only that we have sinned. But we're asking you, God, to forgive us, extend your grace and your mercy our way. We thank you for your word, Heavenly Father. We ask that you will bless your word that it will find a hiding place in our hearts, that we won't sin against you. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to take full control of everything and anything that's been said on here today, Lord God, that it will be used for your glory. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to bless those that are bed bound, Lord God, who can't get up and can't go out to any assembly today. We ask you, Father, to speak directly to their hearts and to strengthen them, Lord God, encourage their hearts, Father. We pray for those that are bereaved, that you will come for their hearts, Lord God. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for backsliders, that you will bring them back before it's too late. We pray for those that are weak, the feeble-minded, Father God, that you would strengthen them. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray and we thank you. Amen. Once again, our Sunday school lesson will come from 2 Peter, chapter number 1, verse 3 through 14. And as always, we're going to read it before we go into it. According to his divine power, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it's me, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that surely I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ had showed me. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And today we talk about blessings of godliness. Blessings of godliness. Blessings are like benefits. Benefits from godliness. For, for being like God. For striving to be like God. We would like to think that godliness means that we are gods. But there is only one God. Godliness is when you are picking up or you are manifesting the likeness of who Jesus Christ actually is. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not something that happens over years. It's a way of life until you die. And while we would like for people to think that we are perfect and we got it all down, packed right, that is simply not the truth according to the word of God. We strive toward perfection. We give everything we got to make it perfect. But as long as we are in our flesh, we will never be perfect. That's a misconception that has caused a lot of people their salvation. It's a misconception that has caused a lot of people who wanted to be saved to not get saved. Because we want people to think that we're perfect. So much so until we start getting into legalism. We've got a lot of legalism going on where we, we want people to think that we can live according to the law. And we portray that we live according to the law, but our spirit lacks because we don't have it right. We just simply don't have it right. We simply just, just as simple as that. We do not have it right. I heard somebody say that we complicate simplicity. It's things that should be just simple, we complicate them. In the household of faith, we complicate them. 
And so we got, um, we have people um, stressed out because they can't live up to our expectations. And one of the things I do, because I love to talk to God, I read the Word of God, but I that is going on. And one of the things that God has said to me is the reason why there's so much brokenness and hurt is because of our expectation. We expect too much from people. We just expect too much from them. Instead of our placing our expectations in God, we put expectations on people. And so when they fail to meet our expectation of who we think they ought to be or what we think they should be doing, then we are wounded, we are hurt, we're disappointed. We got a whole lot of stuff going on with us. But it's not their fault. It's our fault. Because the word of God tells us that we're supposed to um, look to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Not man. It also tells us the arm flesh will fail us. And so what Paul, what um, Peter is doing now is he's letting the people know there are some things that you need to do to show your maturity level. And it should help you with your maturity level. You will see actually the fruits of the Spirit manifested in your life. There's some things that you need to do so that you're mature. And it ain't going to happen overnight. Once again, it's not going to happen overnight. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If anybody even think they're going to get saved today, they're going to be perfect tomorrow. That's just not true. Mm -hmm. While God gives us the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and teach us, because we are still in the flesh, we will never be perfect. But we can strive to be toward, go towards perfection. But what God tells us, He's going to perfect that which concerns. When we really submit and surrender to God, He will start doing perfecting and changing our lives. But the key comes in our commitment to God, our submissiveness to God, and our love for God. Our commitment, our submitment, and our love to God. Not to man, but to God. And there are blessings that's in in included in that. Peter wrote this letter to the, um, to the churches. And he wrote it to them because he knew his time was going on. It was time for, to, um, for Peter to be killed. He was getting ready to die. Jesus already told him it was going to happen. When he, was, he came back, he said, Peter, do you, love, do you love, love me? He said, yeah, feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? He said, yeah, feed my lamb. Do you love me, Peter? He said, yeah. Feed my sheep. And he told, well, what about this man? But, Peter, but God, Jesus said to him, what's he got to do with you? He said, when you get old, they're going to lead you a place that you don't want to go. They're going to encourage you and you're going to go in a direction you don't want to go. As we mature in God, there's some things, a path that we're going to go down that we don't want to go down. We would like to think that things are going to get easier for us, but they're not going to get easier. They're going to get harder. They're going to get harder. Run there. They're going to get harder. The closer you get to God, the harder it's going to get in the world because the world hated Jesus. So the world going to hate you. And one of the things we do, once again, is we have expectations of people. But people are going to be people. You can't change people. If Jesus can't change them, you can't either. And what we need to do is put set our mind, where God said, Set our affections on the things above, not the things on the earth. We need to get so caught up in Jesus Christ Himself that whatever the world does around us won't affect us one way or the other. Because otherwise, we're gonna lose out. We will. We will lose out. Not in losing out on the kingdom of God itself, but we'll lose out on the blessings of God. Because once you got the whole, when you get the Holy Ghost, if you get if the rapture come tomorrow, you're gonna go back with the Lord. But while you're here, there's some blessings. The benefits that Jesus wanted to get to you. Verse 1 says, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained light, precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. He's I'm a servant, first of all, of Jesus Christ. And the thing about it is you cannot be a good leader if you cannot be a good follower. If you can't serve, you can't lead. I don't care who you are, where you came from, or what you think you are. I don't care what your name is, what job you got, how much money you got in pay, none of that matters. If you can't serve, you can't lead. Simple as that. That's the word of God. He's a servant and an apostle. He said, I'm not just a servant, I'm an apostle. God has placed me in that position. Not man. Because we get caught up on what man says that they'll do for us. 
or what man says they won't do for us. One thing, like I said, because I love to talk to God. I said, Lord, I don't understand. And he said, people will never approve of you when you serve men. I don't care what you do. If you do it one way, somebody will be mad. If you do it another way, somebody will be mad. What you got to do is set your approval from me. Get it from me. If you're doing what's pleasing unto me, then I'm going to approve you. But man is never going to approve you. They're going to always find fault with something you do, with something you say, the way you act. And you know what I'm going to tell you something? We are a mess. The saints of God. We are a mess. Because we like to do trickery. Do stuff trick, tricky. We like to do trickery more. We, we, think, we like to do things to try to intimidate people or do stuff underhanded to people. We are a mess. We are a pure mess. That's all we are. We are a mess. That's why we need Christ. And grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Through the knowledge, through the understanding of who Jesus Christ really is and accepting it through faith because that's what happened with Peter. He had to accept what Jesus did at the cross through faith. And we remember back in the scripture, Peter, um, Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me three times, Peter. I'm going, I'm, no, I ain't going to deny you, Jesus. And I'll fight for you. And if they, if they do anything, I'm going to do this. And, I'm, and then when, he got, when they arrested Jesus and they got before the, um, the, the king, what did he do? He said, deny Jesus. Won't you with him? Mm -mm. I won't with him. Yes, you will. Mm -mm. I won't with him. That's what he did. And it's the same way with us. It's the same way. We say that we stand on what is right, but we will support stuff that's wrong. Mm. We'll support it. First of all, if it's got anything to do with our family, we'll support it. If it got anything to do with the people we like, we'll support it if it's wrong. But we love God. So don't you know you just denied Jesus Christ then? We just denied him. When we start supporting things that are wrong, we know it's wrong. And we go along with it. Verse 3, according as his divine power, which is the Holy Spirit living inside us, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Everything that we need to live in this life, a prosperous life, with good health, it came with the Holy Spirit. Everything. Everything. That's why we don't need the approval of people. Because we already got with God. His blessings are already, his benefits came with the Holy Spirit. But they have, once again, they had to come to fruition. It said, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, meaning everything, once again, they're precious to God. God don't just give us anything. People give us anything. They will give us anything. They'll give you what they don't want. They'll give you the leftover. Well, I don't think I'm going to eat no more of this. I'm going to give this to so-and-so and so. They'll eat it. Don't give me your leftovers. Not because I think I'm so much better than anybody else, but I'm just saying, if that's all you got, keep it for yourself. You don't give people, you're supposed to give others the, your best. Jesus gave us his best. So why are you going to give somebody something you don't want? Don't give it to me, give it to somebody else. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature and having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Read that again. Whereby gives us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Everything, once again, that Jesus has for us, they are precious. The benefits are precious to him. And he's given us the best. God gave his best, his son, and now they're going to give us the, their best. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Everything that the world won't do lust, we already been given to us. They want power and dominion. We already got power and dominion. Where did God say when the Holy Ghost come, but you won't have power. God already gave us dominion over the works of his hand. So everything that they lust after, God has already given to us. But if we go back in the scriptures, in the scriptures, when because of our immature nature, we'll never see it come to fruition. The only way God is going to give you is that you got to grow in it. You got to mature in it. And once again, it don't happen overnight. It does not. I don't care what people try to make you think you get saved today and you got all this authority and power and you could lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. And you go, all of that, none of that is true. It doesn't happen overnight. It grows in you. Amen. And beside this, give all diligence add to your faith, virtue. Give it all diligence come continually. You got you to study to show yourself approved. 
You got to can work in it. Continually work in it. You don't just work in it and stop and say, well, I think I'm all right now. Then you become stagnated. You ain't growing in God. You don't see your power increase. You don't see the, the benefits increase. You don't see nothing going on. But that add to your faith virtue. So first of all, we, the Bible tells us without faith is impossible to please God. They that come here must believe that he is a reward them diligent and seek it. In other words, when you got, God has given everybody a measure of faith. So we got that measure of faith. And we started off in this race. And with that faith, we believe that Jesus, what he did on the cross, now saved us. But now we got to grow that faith. It's got to grow. We don't want it to stay right there. If it stay right there, then nothing in our lives change. We're still the same person. We're acting the same way. We're doing the same thing. We're still playing games. We're still doing this. We're still all of that. Same. Never change. Nothing never change. You just got saved. That's all. You got saved. But it says, but add to your faith virtue. And virtue, what is it? Moral excellence. Morally living, living a moral life. So now you got faith. And so God has given you the power to live a moral life. I shouldn't be still doing the same thing I did before I got Holy Spirit. I shouldn't be still live, acting the same way. I shouldn't still be treating people the same way. I shouldn't still be going to the clubs and drinking. And, and I, I shouldn't still be um, having sex out of it. I shouldn't still be an adulterer. I shouldn't still be a fool. I shouldn't still be doing that. I should still be doing that. Because I got the Holy Spirit. And now God has given me the power that I need to come out of that. So now people are, well, yeah, they've been saved uh, 50 years. I ain't going to say they're not saved. But and be careful when you start judging people. But be careful. The Word of God said the same way you judge somebody else, God going to judge you. So now you being so holier than now and so saved and judging people harshly, when you come before God, He's going to judge you the same way. Be careful with how, what you're doing. Be careful with that. Moral essence. We, we got to judge ourselves. What God said, judge yourself. And that's what we're supposed to do. Because I have, I have a conversation with God all the time. I love it. I love it that I can talk to him all the time. Anytime. Yeah, Wherever in the middle of the night. Lord, <laughs> why in the world would they yeah. do that? Why in the world would they act this way? What is going on with them? And it always come back to me. What, what was my part in this? Mm -hmm. What was my part in this? And I had some stuff to go on. And I said, I had to go to God. I said, Lord, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't understand what they're thinking. Help me to understand what they're thinking. What they're thinking. And God said to me, he said, they didn't know God was going to suffer persecution. Mm. If my son didn't go through it, do you think you're not going to go through it? But you got to stand you got to stand on what you believe. You, that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to stand on what we believe. We want to compromise so other people can be happy. We want to compromise. And it says, and to virtue, knowledge. Practical wisdom. Being able to just take the word of God just, and apply it to your own life. We like to quote the scriptures, mm -hmm. but we don't want to know the scriptures. We want to be able to people to know we can quote from Genesis to Revelation and our lives are a wreck. Because the word of God said to not only be a hearer but a doer of the words. Instead of us taking that word and applying it to our lives, what we want to do is have head knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all. We satisfied with that. They can quote that Bible. I'm telling you the truth. They can quote that. You know it. They know they can quote them scriptures. Okay. I ain't listening to the scriptures. I'm looking at your life. Oh, What's going on with your life? What you doing? And when I say me, I'm saying the world. Because that's what we do. We look at people's lives. Should be enough for us to be able to add to it knowledge. So now, we're not just going to have faith. We're going to have virtue. Then we're going to have knowledge. And then it said, and to knowledge, temperance. Self-control. Controlling our passions. And not letting our passions control us. And it, I, I, got, I got temperance. You know how we get, we just so important. We get to doing that neck. I got, me ain't talking, talk, I ain't. Okay. But you're greedy. Every time you see food, you want it. You pack it up, put it in your bag, take it with you. 
Every time you go in the store, you want to buy clothes. You want to buy this. You want because you want to look. Well, I ain't nothing wrong with looking good. Ain't nothing wrong with looking good. Show away. But why have a whole room full of, full of suits and can't ain't whack got the one body and somebody sitting on the side of the ring got that? Greedy. Greedy. Our passion is controlling us. We have no self-control. We have no self-control. Somebody else buys some, I'm gonna buy some too. I I that's all they can get. Well I'm gonna, you gotta push more, I'm gonna go buy a ride more. No self-control. No self-control. And not only with that, me and y'all have no self-control either. Y'all, that lust out the people that can't, people can't even come to church. People don't even want to come to church. I don't know what you're going to say to them. Now how are you going to look at them? No self-control. And women, you just as bad. As soon as a man coming to church, is that my husband? Mm. Keep on taking, looking for husbands. Wow. <laughs> so keep right on. You're going to get exactly what you want. And it says, And to temperance, patience, being steadfast, instead of being swayed by every wind of doctrine, being steadfast on the word of God. James said, being double-minded. We want to be double-minded. We want to be steadfast. Standing on what God has given us, the word that he sends our way. Take that word in its entirety. Take it and then stand on it. But when somebody else comes with another word, we're ready to move. Wow. Ready to move. That's just going on with this word. God sent you the word the first time. We ain't do nothing with it. Let's just be honest. And I ain't talking about one person. I'm talking about everybody. 99.9% .9 of people God can move in a minute. Don't take nothing to sway your faith. In a minute. Wait till the bills be, be time for the bills to be paid. And you ain't got that check and came to me. And then the government done said, because somebody told me, they said, they better not mess my check. Because they do, I'll go to D.C. on two wheels. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Because we are not step, we don't have no steadfastness in the word of God. We don't have faith in what the word of God say. So we get bent out of shape. Doctor starts saying one thing, and you start planning your funeral. Okay, we have no faith in the Word of God. No step. We're not steadfast in the Word of God. Hmm. And to patience, godliness, godliness, living a life like God that is pleasing unto Him. It's pleasing unto him. And once again, let's go back to what I said at the beginning. Nobody is perfect. And if anybody say they're perfect, they are liar and truth ain't in them. Yeah. Nobody. Okay, who it is? Where it come from? The only perfect person was Jesus Christ. He's yeah. going back. If we could be perfect, there would have been no reason for Jesus to come and die. Yeah. That's just common sense. If Because I could be my own savior. I don't care how much the Israelites tried to live according to the law once a year. The great high priest had to go into the holies of holies and offer a sacrifice. And so now, we saying we perfect? We got it all right? We say unholy than thou? The devil is a liar. When we, we start thinking ourselves in a place that we're not, we start giving room to the devil. Mm. We're opening up the door for him to come in. Because what we have become is comfortable in our skin, where we're at. We become comfortable there. We become comfortable there. That's what it is. We become comfortable. Now we think we've already attained. We already reached the place where God wants us to get. But that's not true. If it was, then the scriptures is a lot when it says that he's going to perfect that which concerns us. He's going to have to do it. Because we can't do it. We can't do it. And it says, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. Mm -hmm. Being kind, being patient, empathetic, and loving. I was talking to God about that because, like I said, I like to talk to him. And I said, it's not easy. It's not easy being um, 
in the family of God. It's not easy because everybody got their own identity and their own explanation of what a family, description of what a family actually is. And he said, that's why you got to make sure you please me. Because most families, most families are torn up. They don't even know what a family is. They've never actually been in a family setting. And the family they're with is dysfunctional. So what they do is they bring that dysfunction into the body of Christ. And so what they think a family is supposed to be, they bring that mentality into the church. And now the church functioning like they function in their family. That's why my word is so important. Because we want to think that we know what a church is supposed to look like or a family is supposed to look like. But it's just like I told somebody, I said, people said, you got to, um, God is your father. Go to him like you were your father. I said, my father won't there, so I don't know how to do that. Not the way God said to do it. I don't know how to do that. It's the same way with the body of Christ in the church assembly, which is supposed to be a family. You got a dysfunctional home with a family, and you're bringing that same mentality into the church, to the assembly. And now everybody's wrong but you, but you brought that man sat in there with you. You brought it. You brought yours, and they brought theirs. And nobody is going to God about how the family's supposed to look or how the family's supposed to operate. Simple as that. Like I said, I'm. I go to him, I'm like, Lord, I don't. Yep, because that's your mindset. I don't know how I'm supposed to respond to a father. <clears throat> I've got to learn, and the only way I can learn is I got to study God's word. Mm. That's the only way I can learn it. I can't come up with it on my own. My father wasn't there. So I don't know what a father does for a family. We wonder why our kids are the, are the way they are. Why? I just don't understand these young people. I was on my job. Glory to God. And I don't know why people bring, this is what I'm saying. I don't know why people would bring their kids out and let them be disruptive. Fall out on the floor. Scream and holler. Ran over people. I don't understand that. I'm like, I don't understand that. So like I said, I have to go talk to God about that one. So I go through about everything I don't understand. Go ahead and say that. First of all, everybody got rights besides saved people. Everybody. People, you got a right. Don't spank your kids. That's why the kids spanking you. Is that exactly why? You want to know why? You ain't training them up. All right. Well, I ain't, they ain't going to home. I ain't going to court down by what? Train them up. You ain't got to beat your kids. Train them up. Six-year-old bring a gun to school. My grandfather had a shotgun. And when I was grown, I didn't touch it. He didn't, he didn't lock it up either. It was his and one mine. Don't touch that. Simple as that. Don't you touch that. But no, we don't want you. We want to be our children's friend. My mom said, man, you're not your friend. And you're going to do what I say do too. Because we have taken what the word of God said and tried to twist it to make it fit what the world says. Mm -hmm. And the world says, you better not spank your kids. Mm -hmm. you, you better not, you better not even threaten your kids. Mm -hmm. You better not say you're going to whip them because they can call 911 and we're going to lock you up as a parent. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why they're spanking you. Look at the news. <laughs> Ain't nothing, look at the news. Ain't nothing to see on the news. Somebody's son and killed them. Somebody's daughter and shot them. Somebody got mad and killed the whole family. Babies included. Ain't not, there's nothing to look on that. Because once again, everybody got rights besides saved people. And the reason why we ain't got no rights is because we took our authority and gave it to the enemy and said, you can have it. We want, we're not steadfast. We won't stand on the word of truth. We won't stand, we won't stand together. And to brotherly kindness, love. 
Just pure love. But once again, how can you love when you don't know love? All right. God is love. So if you come to, if when we come to learn who God really is, it's easy to love. Yeah. It's easy to love. Because he accepts us for who we are. But we won't accept each other mm. for who we are. If we're in the body of Christ, God made us individual. He got different DNAs in us. He gave all us gifts and call. We respect and encourage that. That's what Paul was doing. He was encouraging them. We got to learn how to encourage one another. We can't make it so much about us. They hurt my feelings, so I ain't talking to them no more. Mm -hmm. They kicked my dog, so I'm going to kick their cat. All of that. Doing underhanded stuff. And it's not of God. Because the word of God says love is not puffed up. Love is kind and love is gentle. Yes, sir. Yes. Everything. All we got to do is look at the word of God. And see if we are there. Because we say I love you. I told you. I said I told a whole lot of people when I was in the world I loved them. I ain't love none of them. None of them. First of all I ain't love because I ain't know what love was. The second thing, the reason why I ain't love them because I had a selfish love. It was all about me. So now, when they didn't make it about me, I ain't love them. And unless we know who God is and find out who he is, then and only then can we know what love is. It said, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. When, you, when these things mature in you, then you will come to understand who Jesus Christ is. And not only that, but the, God, the word of God tells us that we'll bring forth more fruit. Much, much fruit. People want to follow us. They'll want, they'll want to be in the body of Christ. Only then. But he that lacketh these things are blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from old sin. And when you're not mature, you're still living in the past. Mm -hmm. You're still there. You're stuck right there. And not moving forward. And so now Satan can tell you, you ain't saying. Don't you remember you used to do so and so and so and so and so? Because you haven't come to the knowledge of who, what Jesus Christ actually did. Because the word of God said, old things are passed away, so you don't have to live there anymore. Wherefore, the brother, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and elections. You'll do everything you can. Everything in your power. You may not be perfect, but everything in your power that you can do, you're supposed to do it. For God. Because if we was to put in as much effort and, and get it to know God and please the God as we put it to please the people, oh, we'll be some bad people in the church. Because we want to please them. We want to please them. And we lie and say, in the name of Jesus. No, it ain't. Because if it was in the name of Jesus, you'd be serving God better than you serving Him. But no. I just do it. I'm trying to keep the peace. Well, you ain't trying to keep the peace with God. Ain't he supposed to be more important than the people? Than your spouse? Than your family? Than your siblings? Than your children? Than your friend? Ain't he supposed to be more important? But you're keeping the peace. You're not keeping the peace with God. Wherefore the brother, brethren, give diligence to make your calling as sure. For if you do this thing, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundant to the everlasting kingdom of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're going to be making your way into the kingdom of God. One of the benefits is to, to live and reign with Christ forever. One of the benefits. Wherefore I would not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them. And be established in the present truth. Sometimes we got to remind people. And there's nothing wrong with reminding them. If they get mad, then you ain't the wrong with the problem. You're doing what God said. Bring them into remembrance of what he actually did. Yea, I think it's me. As long as I am in this tabernacle, Paul said, while I'm living, to stir you up to put you, by putting you in remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put all this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. He said, I got to do it while I'm alive, because the time is going to come and I'm going to be gone. But for right now, while I'm alive, I'm going to bring you into remembrance exactly what Jesus did. Or what's inside of you. Or who you're supposed to be. And then, because the time will come, I'm going to be gone. 
And the time will come when we all going to be gone. And we stand before God. They didn't even tell him no. I was going to tell them. I was waiting. What you waiting for? No. What we waiting for? We not waiting. We, what we doing is we going to wait for them to be happy with us. I was like, I said, God, God, you know, God, I try. I want people to like me. I want to like me. I want to please people. I want to win them. And he said, you're going about it the right, the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You're going about it the wrong way. Because you ain't standing on my word. What you're doing, you are more important. It's more important to you for to make them happy and for them to be pleased. You put more effort in that than you do in making me happy and me being pleased. I said, okay. 2023, Chris had a little thing up there. It's me, we said me and Jesus. 2023, Jesus and me in 2023. I said, okay. It's Jesus and Jane in 2023. I can't help who like me, who don't like me. I'm going to stand, I'm going to be steadfast. Because the Lord might come. And if he come and we ain't got it right, what we going to do? I don't need to tell him that. I think he said, he said, God sent us a word and said, get right and stay right. That if you're going to get right and stay right, you got to be steadfast and stand on the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless and praise you for your goodness and for your mercy, for your tender loving kindness. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for adopting us into your family. Lord God, we repent of the times, Lord God, when we chose others over you. We repent of the times, God, we won't diligent in our studying to show ourselves approved unto you, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We repent of the times, Lord God, when we didn't love the way we were, we became stuck and stagnated, not allowing you to mature us. We repent, Father. And we ask for your forgiveness. We ask you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we submit and surrender to you, Lord God, to lead and guide us unto all truth. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. Heavenly Father, and bless us that we, Lord God, will be a blessing to somebody else. That they, in turn, Lord God, will come to know you in the pardon of their sins. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise because it is yours. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for joining us today. We hope you hear something that has blessed you. We hope you come back and visit us again. If you don't have a church family, don't have a church home, we are right here on America Road in Henderson, North Carolina, Greater Refuge Church. Once again, our pastor is none other than Elder William T. Winston. If you do not have, have not been baptized, someone is here to baptize you. If you do not have the Holy Ghost, there's someone here to work for the altar with you. We ask you to come out and join us. Service starts at 10 o'clock. If you cannot come join us in person, stay right here and join us on Facebook. We bid you guys grace and peace. Have a blessed day. Grace and peace. Amen.